So we just calculated the force on a square current loop in a magnetic field, and so the total force is zero. So it shouldn't move. So here, we'll test this with a demo. So this is a square current loop. So if you follow the current flowing from the power supply through this big clip, it goes up through uh, here, out there. There's little cups with mercury in them so that it has electrical contact, but it can still move. Anyway, the current flows eventually through the square and then back out. So nice square current loop once I turn it on. There's no current now. This is a big piece of a magnet, and this is the North Pole, so a magnetic field points out this way. So if I hold this here, this is pretty similar to what we had, where we calculated total force of zero. So let me turn on power supply. And when I throw the switch, we'll have current. So let's see what happens. Total force equals zero. Let's see, and, and it moved. Well, that can't be. We calculated that the total force would be zero. Let's try one more time. Throw the switch. There it goes again. What is going on? We calculated that the sum of the force should be zero. That's equal to ma. The acceleration should be zero. It was at rest. No acceleration. Why did it move? Well, this, Newton's uh, second law, applies to a point particle, really, just to an individual mass. It has no degrees of freedom to be deformed or to rotate or anything like that. And what we have here, our square loop, is much more than a point mass. It's a square loop. It can rotate. Right? So what's going on here is that there is a torque. So let's do our simple definition of torque. The tendency of a force to rotate an object about an axis. And I see that as the semester has worn on, I've gone away from my plain spoken definitions. I apologize. A torque means you spin stuff. That's what I, probably what I, what I should have written. So you can have a torque in this case, because as you recall, we have a magnetic field to the right. And we have our square loop like that. And remember, in this case, if the current went around like that, we had a force pulling this way. On this side, a force that way on that side. So what's going to happen is it's going to spin around an axis. And in this case, the axis is right through the center of the loop. So it's going to spin kind of like in that direction. And that's exactly what it did. The left side came towards me. The right side went away from me, from my perspective. Okay. Now. You've got to think about the problem a little bit. Sometimes the rotation axis is defined by the system. In that setup, the little pins are sitting in the cup. It has to rotate about this axis. Sometimes you just have to think about the thing freely floating in space. And you just have to think about the symmetry of the forces that define the axis. But usually in this kind of a problem, the axis around which it rotates will either give it to you or it'll be obvious. So the magnetic field doesn't move the thing. Its center of mass doesn't move. The, sum of the total sum of the forces is zero. But it can rotate the thing, and it can cause a torque. 